we're going to the Rise of Mycoprotein plant in right outside of San Francisco in Sacramento with my guest today, the CEO of the Better Meat Company, Paul Shapiro is with me. Paul, thanks for being here. Let me just talk briefly, Elizabeth, if you don't mind, about how we make plant-based meat today. Because right now, nearly all of the meat that is sold in the plant-based world is coming from one of three crops. It's coming from soy, coming from wheat, or it's coming from peas, or it's coming from some combination thereof. Now, if you notice, all of those have one thing in common. They are all plants. And plants are very far, evolutionarily speaking, away from animals. So it takes a lot to get, for example, a pea to have the texture and taste of an animal. So what you do is you have to grow a field of peas, let's say, mill it into a flour. Now you have a pea flour that's not that high in protein, so you fractionate it. You remove that fiber, remove that fat, concentrate that protein down so it's a plant protein isolate. So it's like a pea protein powder that like a you know, bodybuilder might take. But the problem is that it still doesn't have the texture of animal's meat. So then you subject it to extrusion, which is basically a lot of heat and a lot of pressure that changes the structure of the protein. So it goes from being globular, like a plant protein, to stringy, like an animal protein. And that's the basis for how we get plant-based meat today, or at least the base ingredient of a plant-based meat. Um, so you have to do all of that because plants, again, are very far away from animals. However, there is another kingdom altogether. Not plants, not animals, but fungi. And fungi are really amazing. They're amazing because they are not in the middle of plants and animals. They are way closer to animals than they are to plants. And so just as an example, if you think about, you know, we as animals breathe in oxygen, we breathe out CO2. We all know plants do the opposite, right? They breathe in CO2 and sequester and they breathe out oxygen. Well, uh, similarly, fungi breathe in oxygen just like animals do. That's how much closer to us than to plants they are. They breathe in oxygen, they breathe out CO2. Also, um, you know, plants just put themselves in the sun and photosynthesize, whereas animals and fungi have to search out for the food and, and digest it. And that's one more reason what we know, for example, that fungi are just way more animal-like. And this is why mushrooms have a much more meat-like texture than do plants. Mushrooms are way meatier than plants. And this is why in Asian cuisine, for example, mushrooms have been used for centuries as a meat substitute. However, there are a few deficiencies, mainly that mushrooms are not that high in protein. So rather than using the mushroom, which is the fruiting body of the fungi, you can use what's called the mycelium or the mycoprotein. And this is the root-like structure underneath that mushroom that is high in protein. And often many of the species of fungi actually have a very meat-like texture. So what we're doing here at the Better Meat Co is subjecting our, uh, myco, our little microscopic fungi to a type of fermentation where, like for example, think about how a cow eats grass, right? And then over a long period of time, that cow converts grass into a steak. Well, our little microscopic fungi are eating potatoes and they're converting those potatoes into something that looks and tastes like meat through a fermentation process. And unlike a cow though, not only are our microbes not conscious and sentient and suffering, but also unlike a cow, uh, you know, you don't slaughter a cow for like, you know, 14 uh, to 20 months or so depending on how the cow was raised. Whereas we are running this fermentation where we're harvesting our little mycoproteins in less than a day. So we go from potatoes to meat in less than one single day in this system here behind me. And that, I know it seems like magic, but it's not magic, it's just science, it's fermentation. And so what we're capable of doing is essentially using the fungi kingdom and all the amazing things it can do making an alternative meat that is a whole food. It's so meat like in its texture that we don't have to fractionate it and isolate it and extrude it just straight out of the fermenter. It automatically has the texture of animal based meat. And so it's a whole food. It's not an isolate or a fractionate. It's a whole food that we offer that is delicious, succulent and meat like without the need for all of these steps to process it into something that looks and tastes like animal meat. Uh, you got that everybody? 